Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In a couple of videos back, I talked about authentication and authorization between microservices. And after that video, I got some request about doing a video of a practical example or a simple example of how this can be achieved. So these are few ways we can implement authentication and authorization. But the main theme here is usually we can do the authentication at the API gateway level and then the authenticated user or authenticated request will be passed along to microservices. And then the microservices themselves do not have to deal with authentication as such, but they can do the authorization based on user and tenant information and then allow a request to happen. So between API Gateway and the microservices, API Gateway will be responsible only for authentication, making sure the claim of the user is valid, but then whether is allowed to perform an action or not will be done by individual microservices. So that's the pattern I usually like to follow. And to demonstrate that, what I have done is I created this microservices environment. Now in terms of code, there is nothing much, but this is going to show you how we can implement this in a real life microservices environment. So I have an inventory microservice and the order microservice. Now inventory microservice has get, get, post, put, delete. Most of it is not available right now. But what I have done is I have implemented the get method. And you can see here in the get method, it is trying to pick up the account number from request header. Now, if you remember what I discussed last time based on this diagram is that the API gateway is going to authenticate, extract the authenticated users claims and then pass it along to microservices. So in this example, what I have done is account ID is something which I am expecting to get out of users authentication claim and then pass it along to the microservice. So for doing that, what I have done is I created a microservice where I have used the Ocelot API gateway. If you don't know what is Ocelot API gateway, it is a NuGet package using which we can very easily create an API gateway in .NET. And I have a video on how to use Ocelot. I'll share the link for that video in the description below. So here, all I am doing is I am adding Ocelot to the dependency injection container and after adding the Ocelot here, I am using the middleware for Ocelot, which is use Ocelot and wait. And then for using Ocelot, what we have to do is we have to create an Ocelot configuration file. And in the Ocelot configuration file, we create an upstream and a downstream record for each route path. So here I have multiple routes in this routes array. The first one is API slash order. And I'm saying that when I get a request for API slash order, be it get, post, put, or delete, I'm going to go to the HTTP request. And here it can be HTTP or HTTPS. I'm using HTTP because I'm running local host and everything running in HTTP and not HTTPS. So I'm saying it is HTTP is going to go to the host as local host and port as 5282. So 5282 is where the order is supposed to run. Now I'm running all this application. So if you look into the order, it is running at 5282 and the inventory is running at 5239. So here I have created a path for inventory. Similarly, it's running at 5239 port. So here I'm saying if any call comes from API slash inventory, be it get, post, put, or delete, forward it to the HTTP endpoint localhost 5239. And the downstream route path is API slash inventory. 
that's all I am doing. What this is going to do is this is going to configure the Ocelot and it will forward all the request to the respective microservices. And then the other thing what I'm doing is here I missed to mention it before but in the configuration I'm adding the JSON file and I'm adding the Ocelot.json. Now if you have QA staging production related configuration you can create this JSON file with Ocelot.QA.json and so on and so forth. And here based on the environment variable whatever is your ASP.NET Core environment, you can pick up the appropriate Ocelot.json file. So that's something you can do. Now, after I configured this here, I used a middleware. It's called API Key Authentication Handler. So this is my authentication handler. Here, it's a simple authentication handler. It has the convention-based implementation for middleware. I have the invoke async. And invoke async, I am checking if it contains a header called authorization. And if the authorization header is there, I'm checking if the API key passed as a part of the authorization header is an API key value. Now here, in a real life scenario, you are not going to check against a hard-coded value. It will be probably checked against some sort of data store to ensure that the API key is valid. And then, you will figure out the account ID associated to the API key, but here I have hard coded. So here I'm checking if API key is null or empty or it is not equal to this API key, then just return 401. Otherwise, add the account number 1235 into the HTTP request header. So here, basically all I'm saying is if the user is authenticated, find the user's account information, account or tenant, whatever you want to call. You can add the user information also. Instead of API key, if this is an authentication token which is created by a user ID password, you can extract the user information also. So after you get the tenant and user information, you can add it to the request header. What it will do is when the request is forwarded here, through Ocelot configuration, this particular header also will be passed across to the next microservice. So that is why when we are going to inventory, if we call the get, the inventory should be able to get the account information from the request header and just use it. Now, as I mentioned before, this inventory service is going to be inside of your network, meaning it will not be exposed to the internet. The only thing which will be exposed to the internet will be this microservice for Ocelot or the API gateway. And every request that is coming inside of the API gateway will be authenticated. Hence, here in the Inventory microservice, I am not doing any authentication. I expect that this account ID, which I am extracting from the header, is going to be the right account ID. So that is what I am doing. Similarly, I have order controller, but here I have not done any implementation. This is just to show that we can have multiple microservices. So as you can see here, this is where we are passing on the account ID and here in the inventory controller, we are accessing it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the postman and I'm going to make a call to the API slash inventory. And you will see here the port number of this is not the port number of inventory, which is 5239. Instead, it is port number of the authentication middleware or the API gateway, it is 5032. So I'm going to make a call to 5032, which is the API gateway, and then pass the API route for the inventory, which in turn is going to check the authentication and pass it along to the inventory microservice. And here in the HTTP header, I added the authorization and for the authorization, I am sending the API key, which I hard coded there. 
So let me make a request here. And once I make a request, I can see the response inventory and the account number coming back as 12345, which is what I was injecting or adding to the HTTP request. So this is how we can use API Gateway to do the authentication. And then after the user has been authenticated, we can pass along the user's context into all the microservices through HTTP header. And here I have used Ocelot. If you are using a cloud provider, you can use an API gateway in Amazon or a front door in Azure. They can do pretty much the same thing and you can have the authentication handled in that API gateway level. So this is the example of how we can do authentication and authorization between microservices. Now, as I mentioned, the authentication here is done. For the authorization, you can take this account ID and check against your authorization store to see if this account ID is eligible to make a get call. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this microservice, when it is going to call another microservice, for example, order, it would need to pass along this HTTP header request so that the microservice can get the account information and perform properly. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.